Hello everybody and welcome to a new TTRPG. We're going to be playing Monster of the Week tonight and uh, it's going to be weird as fuck. Uh, tonight we are uh, exploring Birkins by Midnight. Uh, the uh, I, I kind of fucked up the title because I totally forgot what the Roll20 was called, but it's we're exploring Birkins by Midnight. The premise of this game is that these uh, lovely people are either... Uh, uh, locals who are uh, free who frequent this one particular bodega in the middle of nowhere and or uh employees of a strange and uh anomalous uh gas station slash bodega um welcome to the weirdness that is monster of the week and welcome to uh my fucked up little uh idea it, we'll see how where, how far it goes we're gonna we're gonna see how far it goes. You could have just said welcome to my twisted mind. Yeah, but I'm fair. but I'm not gonna do that because that that to um my twisted way of life. Yeah, but like <laughs> that would promote that book, and I'm not I'm not about that life. Oh, um, I didn't know if it was. Oh, I didn't know it was the book. Yeah, it's a that that also is a quote from Elliot Roger, and we don't we don't quote Elliot Roger here. He was a oh, weird was incel. Happened. Um, no, no. That is quoting Theodore J. Kaczynski. Yeah, either way. For his mathematics work. But yeah, hi everybody. Welcome to uh, welcome to Monster of the Week. We're going to go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, not your characters just yet. We'll do that in session. But uh, if you could just, we're going to go down the line and we're going to start with Crow. If you could introduce yourself and where we can find you other than this table. Hi, my name is Resident Scarecrow, but please just call me Crow. Tonight, I am playing a guy who everyone only refers to as Dr. Feelgood after the name of, after the brand of energy drink. He drinks like water. Imbibes. Um, yeah. He, uh, he's totally, Crow, totally just. I have a question. I have an answer. Did you, uh, listen to the thing that I said about not introducing your character? No. Yeah, there you go. I was not here for that. Fantastic. Um, it was two seconds ago. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, where can we find you other than the ta this table? Uh, you you can find me either in Bell's backyard or some random field of rock. He scares away the carrion I birds from my tomato plants. And occasionally government agents, but mostly carrion birds, because the government has gotten wise to what I do, which is just, very little. Fantastic. Listen, just let me eat the, just let me eat the government agents. This is uh, a joke. <laughs> yeah, really. For, for uh, legal purposes, this is a joke. Uh, Claire, why don't you introduce yourself and where we can find you other than this table? Sorry, you said that just as I put Tom Katsu in my mouth. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Claire. Um, you, you can't find me anywhere else uh, right now, except maybe in your walls. Specifically, my walls is great. Walls, I'm omnipotent. <laughs> and uh, next, uh, Jester. I'm an Jester Void. You can call me either or. I go by he, him, or his pronouns. Um, um, you can find Jester fighting Crow in my backyard for rain uh, over no. the tomato plants. <laughs> No, I keep, no, I keep sending uh, emails uh, to Crow because he won't give me peaches back. Uh, who's the pig? Uh, who's the pig that was mine, uh, and that uh, custody was stolen from me? Peaches uh, is my prize hog now. Okay, but you told me you would give her back after she was so picky, and then you're going back on your promise. Because she's started to find certain canned dishes I can cook that she likes. I'm very confused. I'm gonna take this and I'm, I'm taking this to this family is the, court. This is the deep lore of Paladin Bell stream uh stream do, uh quote unquote divorce court. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm taking you to divorce court for peaches. Fantastic. And uh finally, Ms. Huffy, if you could introduce yourself and tell us where else we can find you on this uh, fantastic uh, on this fantastic app. Hi, I'm Miss Huffy. Uh, share your pronouns, which I'll give you slash Miss Huffy. Uh, and patreon.com slash Miss Huffy. What are your pronouns, dear? I did say that. She, her. Okay, cool. 
Um, I gotta turn you up just a smidge because you are a little quiet. I think it's because I turned I'm you down sorry. when you're. That's okay. You're not. Okay, now uh, speak for me. I got a full file on my mouth. Fantastic. You are perfectly audible now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Perfect. We're, let's have a fucking mouthful of food. Okay. So, we pan in to just after a very large, or during a very large uh, scale storm. You are in rural North Carolina in the middle of a small, on the edge of a small town uh, known as Roxport. And within Roxport, uh, people don't really report uh, paranormal activity because it's so common. Um, but people often call uh, ambulances in Roxport gas station wagons uh, because there's so often that people who go out to the bodega that you all work at, Birkins, um, that get harmed or go missing and then pop up days later with like, tra like traumatic looks and unable to speak, that ga the people just kind of call them Birkins wagons or gas station wagons. We pan in on a Thursday night, deep, deep in in the middle of a massive uh, 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 summer storm during monsoon season. Uh, heavy winds and rain pour down, and uh, I believe. And we're going to introduce Huffy's character first, as your power has gone out, but the power to the bodega has not. Oh shit. Do I need power for anything in particular? Um, just lights and air conditioning, because it's hot as fuck in North Carolina, even when it's storming. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll uh, go, like, go pay a visit to the local bodega. All I'll right. The neighbor. Uh, yeah, so you uh, head into the bodega, and inside you see uh, Birch and Dr. Feelgood and the newest employee. Uh, Claire, what did you name your character again? Uh, oh shoot, I put it in the Discord. Uh, it is Isabella Savoy. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, and the newest uh, employee, Isabella Savoy, uh, a transfer from one of the Italian uh, branches of the um, uh, of the uh, Bodegas franchise. Uh, the if you guys, so uh, Huffy, if you wouldn't mind, can you describe your character and tell us a little bit about her? Uh... Uh, we can have I can have someone else do it and then you can sure, you can do yours better, after fantastic person how do I describe a person you describe what they look like you made the character I guess uh okay crow say what they are crow why don't you give us a description of dr feelgood what's he wearing what's his, you know what is his eye color hair color that kind of thing Dr. Feelgood is a somewhat taller man, much taller than the average people around town, but there's a lot of people who are much taller than him. He is standing somewhere above six foot, hard to tell considering he's always slouching and occasionally standing up straight, sometimes standing on his toes. It fluctuates. Uh, he's got kind of greasy hair, like he showered that morning, but was then dealing, was then working in the, in the parking lot, built up a sweat, is now inside, so it was clean and now isn't, held back by a flat felt cap, colored gray by... God knows what at this point. You can't quite see his eyes as they're always hidden behind a set of really dark sunglasses. Pro another set of cheap aviators that you could buy from a gas station. Always got a warm and rather welcoming smile on his, fi on his mouth as, you know, sometimes you can see him scratching at the hair 
from that ratty beard he's growing out. Uh, he's got a denim shirt, a brown canvas shirt, and a and the company provided black t-shirt. Not in that order. Uh, the dark company pants and the and a nice durable set of leather boots with a uh, earbud hidden under one of his coats going into his left ear connected to what looks to be a Walkman. Hell yeah. Is he wearing, not the, are his boots non-slip? Which is company policy. Yes, they are. And they are, however, not the right color for company policy. Okay, so they're not black and they, and they are probably not steel toe. Which is also company policy. No, they are just a set of... They were recolored to be a dark brown, but they are not steel toe, but they are non-slip. Fantastic. Okay. You're only getting written up for not having the steel toe and the, and the, and the black color. Uh, Claire, if you could uh, uh, describe your character a little bit, please. Okay. Um... She has uh, all of a sort of like <clears throat> nice caramel skin color, uh, olive, um, short black hair, uh, like some little cuts on her face, and she is wearing the uh, full complete company uniform, as much black as you could possibly throw on a woman. Yeah, so, so the company uniform, just to kind of give you a, a description of it, is a, a, a black t-shirt doesn't have to be the company t-shirt it just has to be a black t-shirt uh a pair of black either slacks or jeans and or a skirt and a pair of black non-slip steel-toed shoes would wearing long sleeves be against company policy not at all okay then she's wearing the long sleeve variant okay cool they will actually they actually do provide a long sleeve version and a black hoodie Woo! And then, and then, uh, yes. Black, uh, long sleeve and hoodie. Fantastic. The baggier the better. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, hair color or anything like that you want to share? Uh, I, I said she had black hair. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, and now, Jester, why don't you, why don't you describe Birch for us? Conveniently, I'm also drawing Birch, so. Yeah. The, the right candidate for this. Um, uh, Birch is about a five foot three, uh, tan, tan, semi pale, like like a colder tan, uh, kind of skin tone, um, long curly hair that goes to his back, uh, the the top of it, it looks like it needs to touch it for a dye. The top is brown, and then like, uh, from like the eye level down is like, starting to fade blue hair dye. Um, the natural hair color is brown. Uh, eye color is a dullish green with a weird mix, a weird, like, swirl of purple in there. Uh, unsure if that's a contact or not. Uh, doesn't give a straight answer about it. Um, where's company uniform? Uh, is he, is he wearing the, uh, the... Uh, long sleeve and or hoodie variant of the company uniform right now? Uh, no, nah, short sleeve. Uh, it's short sleeved and a short sleeved uh, uh, black jacket over it. Uh, short sleeves no, in, a, in, a, in a monsoon is uh, a choice. Okay, but like, I'm inside. It's fine. There's like a, the hoodie's in the break room, so. Okay. Uh, it's actually, I think it's more of, like, a button-up shirt and, like, an undershirt kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Uh, is wearing, uh, you know, uh, black steel-toed shoes. Uh. Company, company uniform compliant. Is company uniform compliant. It's kind of looking spaced out right now. Uh, behind the cashier register, but he's here. He's also wearing a face mask. Uh. The CDC can't come from my house. <laughs> okay, and finally, Ms. Huffy, if you could describe yeah. your character, please. Uh, so, Ruth is essentially a 40-something lady who can usually be seen in her self-defense 
uh, establishments like uh, training uniform, essential. Like a gi? Uh, like a gi, but it's not one. Uh, it's essentially, she keeps the sandals on, but right now she's mostly just got like a, an overcoat, something to keep the rain off. Uh, she's got like bright auburn eyes, and despite the whole like karate attire, she's all, literally, or like not karate, but like self defense attire. Uh, she's literally got like brass knuckles and shit. Like she's not the t- like she teaches the kind of self defense that's to like grab them by the balls type. You know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, cool. <laughs> besides that, she's pretty nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. She's not tired. She's a tired, tired older lady. Fantastic. Oh, what a mute. High five. Fantastic. Okay. Oh. So we pan into the bodega as you guys are kind of scuttling around. Uh, it seems that nobody's really come in today because of the monsoon. Um, but Ruth comes in as the power, you know, you the the power never goes out of the bodega, weirdly. Like, the, it's almost as if it's not affected by, like, the rain. Like, there's almost a bubble. Like, the rain hits the store, but it's not hitting at the same level it would... Like say the self defense uh, instruction building next door. Um, I mean, I feel like sandal sounds. I feel like on the scale of things that are a problem, us never losing power is not a huge one. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that's a problem. I'd say that's a boon uh, working for this place. Um, so, you guys, uh, so Birch, you did say that you had an ability that gives you premonitions, right? Uh, I do. Do you need me to roll weird? Yes, please and thank you. Roll weird for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Let me open the right tab first uh, to do that. Uh, where's my weird? There it is. Uh, big money, big money, big money, big money. Hell Next yeah! Success. Okay. Uh, what do you get on a mixed success? If you wouldn't mind reading uh, that out for me. Uh, on 7 to 9, you get clouded images of something bad begin to happen. Mark experience if you stop it. Uh, so you get a vision of, uh, a lithe woman, uh, with almost graying skin, uh, and she's saying something. You can't quite make out what she's saying, but you, she's saying something. Uh, and it's as if she's trying to warn you of an impending doom. Like, that's the that's feeling fine. you get, but uh-huh. you cannot understand what she's saying. Uh, sick. Thank you. Five women grace skin. I think, it, it, like, in universe, it's like, uh, staring blankly ahead, uh, gets startled by the... <laughs> by the bell, bell. Of, of someone coming inside. Uh, uh and is. Yeah. Uh, I'll be with you in a second. And it's just like uh, very swiftly writing on like the last post it note of Lithe Gray, wo- Lithe, Lithe Gray skinned woman danger <laughs> in like uh, semi, semi sloppy handwriting. And the way that when you're rushed, it never looks good. Yeah, okay. Um, alrighty. Uh, so. Uh, as you enter the bodega, what do you do, Ruth? What are you, what are you doing? I think she's going to go around and pick out a couple things. Some ice cream, uh, gum, uh, Kung Fu Panda 2 DVD. Fantastic. <laughs> Essentials. Fantastic. Some glow sticks, because it's, it powers out. All right. And you probably have um, candles, if you want candles instead of, like, glow sticks. Yeah, they do have, so like, little tea light candles. When I can have glow sticks. Um, there's also a, like, uh, relaxation area on the second floor with, like, a couch and a TV and a DVD player for the Kung Fu TV. Do you guys two have DVD. any of those, like, massage chairs up there? Uh, yes, there are two of them. They are coin-operated. Do you, have, do you have to pay for them, though? Or, do they, or are they free? They are coin-operated, oh. and you have to pay... It is, uh, 25 cents, and it's 25 cents a minute. So... I have... Yeah. Uh, personal for a minute, shit. I have a personal, I have personal experience with those. Uh, cause I used to work 
uh, when I did security at like special events, there's this place that had those. But if you sat down and you didn't put any money in, it screamed at you. These don't scream. They just don't vibrate if you don't if you don't uh, pay any money. God bless. I'd like to check around and, and see if anybody's upstairs to, like, is there anybody with an eye, like, keeping an eye on the floor and stuff? Uh, I would, uh, Dr. Feelgood or, um, let me double check your, your name again. My bad, Claire. Uh, Dr. Feelgood or Isabella, would you be up in the air, the deli area, kind of keeping an eye on the guest's relaxation area? There, it's kind of right across from, like, where you make sandwiches uh, which is kind of why if there's a relaxation area there, it's encouraging the, the customers, buy a sandwich, come sit and relax, watch some TV. Who's working the deli today? I get the feeling uh, today is the day management said, hey, doc, you should probably teach the new hire how to work the deli. Yeah, so I'd say both of you were up there. Um... How do you, uh, so Isabella and Doc, you are in the deli. It's a small, almost subway-like area where all of the meats are kind of out and you've got, uh, you've got bottles of, like, condiments and things to, to, uh, to, like, make sandwiches. It is, uh, copyright distinct, uh, enough where, you know, you don't have Italian urban cheese, you have Sicilian urban cheese bread, uh, you've got, <laughs> like, uh, you've got, you know, wheat and white bread can't be, like, copyright claimed so you've got those you've got a rye swirl with like a uh, pumpernickel uh it you got you got some some good bread choices um you got a full foot long of brioche um and you know you have a selection of meats uh pepperoni ham salami uh you know prosciutto all that um and doc you're kind of uh, instructing isabella on how to use the uh use the 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 deli what i want you to do is roll me cool to see if you are actually good at it <laughs> <laughs> oh you're having doc roll cool oh wait no cool not charm yep not charm cool that uh, is uh, that... 14 on the dice that yeah, is you're, the max you're i can get damn good you're damn good at rolling it at uh this fucking deli it's like you've only you've worked at a deli counter before good surprise surprise um you're you're very good at at doing this and isabella and kind of uh what do you kind of say to your new your new trainee doc um no. oh now Hold on, now I have to get back into Doc's voice. <clears throat> now, a lot of customers are going to say, Hey, don't put on too much meat. Most of the time, you do what they say, but there are some people who, when you see them, they stare at the sandwich longingly. You'll know the type. You don't even ask if they want extra meat, and you don't charge for extra meat. And you watch as Doc is kind of piling on uh, a little bit of extra meat, and he's, he's making a really decent sandwich for himself. He does, kind of He's not telling you this is going to be for him, that he's going to steal it later. What kind of sandwich? But it's heavily fried. What kind of sandwich you put, do you make in, uh, Doc? Uh, so after he, uh, sliced the bread, he's put on a good bit of prosciutto, a couple slices of salami, added on some shredded cheese, popped it in the toaster for a little bit, pulled it out, added a bunch of spinach, a little bit of lettuce, a couple olives, red, red onions, and a thick layer of sweet onion sauce. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's a oh, delicious sounding sandwich. <clears throat> Um, it's my usual order. Uh, yeah, so uh, Isabella, you're kind of being trained on deli. Uh, what are you? How how are you uh, reacting to this? What's your What's your character doing? As Doc is teaching you how to make a sandwich. This man is making a meat mountain. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> Do you say that to him? Do you call uh, him fucking meat mountain to him? Uh, sure, I will. Say, what? You are making myself a meat mountain. I mean, to be fair, 
This is also one of the only times I eat solid food in the day. For the rest of it, I, you know. And he pull, he reaches into his coat pocket and he pulls out another can of an energy drink labeled Dr. Feelgood, cracks it open and takes a long sip. The other brand is known as Kickstart My Heart. <laughs> Do you have the heartbeat of a hummingbird? <laughs> Believe it or not, I honestly think at this point I don't have a heartbeat. Oh. Uh, so it was at that moment that all of the... So you have a company-assigned cell phone. Essentially what you're told to do with this company-assigned cell phone is to just check it when management sends messages to it. Don't use it as a cell phone outside of the store. You're even supposed to put them back at the end of the night. So, at that moment, you hear boom, boom, which is the notification noise for uh, for management. Um, and management has sent you all a message that reads, uh, warning for all uh, employees and customers. Do not leave the, uh, Do not leave the bodega. It is not safe. We do not want to alarm you or cause a panic, but it is not safe. And it is not because of the storm that it is not safe. Management, smiley face. Uh, can I text management back? Uh, if you would like to text management back, please text management back. What do you say? Uh, we're not allowed outside anyway. What's the difference? <laughs> uh, okay. So you do receive a response, specifically you. So you, you're, for you, it's bing, boom. <laughs> um, your your little cell phone kind of goes off, uh, and the response is, "There is a reason why you are not allowed outside normally. It is worse tonight." Ah, fuck. Damn. Uh, I don't reply. I just put it away. Uh, yeah, and that was from Manager Seventeen. <clears throat> Sick. Love my boy, Manager Seventeen. We love Manager Seventeen in this house. Okay, so each of you uh, are are um, kind of told that, you know, you've been told, uh, does anyone inform Ruth? Because Ruth does not have a cell phone that is, uh, attaches to the store. Uh, uh, Ruth, Ruth just came upstairs, right? Yes. Uh, Doc looks over at Ruth, sort of waves at her. Hey, Ruth, uh, little heads up. Apparently the squirrels are getting worse tonight or something, so probably safer to stay inside for a bit. Yeah, Alright, you got a voucher for these uh, massage chairs? Sadly, no, but I can get you a new sandwich. That'd be wonderful, my friend. And if you keep watching her for like a moment longer uh, before you go to, to do that, you essentially see her like with a coin and a string. <laughs> <laughs> no one sees Ruth do this. Okay, as, as, okay, as hold on. Back. Hold on, Ruth. Uh, give me two seconds. I gotta find your character sheet. You want sure you want me to roll something? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, there you go. Hey. It's anti -Ruth. Hey, can so, I... Hmm. Can Doc willingly see this and then pretend he doesn't roll sharp yeah. is that for me or you or for for you for you for anti Ruth. Did, did you purposefully choose my worst stat no that's just what okay. that's just what it would be to try and uh, sneak this coin out i would have thought it'd be cool but i think i got a fucking success yeah you are able to slip it in slip it right back out uh, and it takes the coin you know it reads the coin uh, and, uh, uh, Isabella, you get a text from management. Ding, boom. Oh, boy. Please inform, uh, Auntie Ruth not to, not to cheap out on, sneak. on the, on the, <laughs> uh, the coin, on the coin-operated chairs. It's 25 cents a minute, no exceptions. Thank you, management. I, 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 I walk up to Ruth and repeat like a robot. Do not cheap out on the chairs. It is 25 cents a minute. 
You're pretty new. Uh, I don't think we've been introduced yet. Uh, what might I call you? Isabella. It's a pleasure to meet you, Isabella. Uh, I'm Luke. It's, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I, so I'll, I'll pay for the missions for sure. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't start, right? <laughs> yes. See. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so uh, Isabella and Birch, you get another text from management. Damn, they're busy tonight. Uh, yeah, they okay. are. They are busy tonight. It seems that management has uh, something has happened that made management a little more active this evening. Uh, your text message comes through, and essentially it says, "Hey, uh, please, as a reminder." Uh, uh, Dr. Feelgood does not have a company tab. That sandwich is not free. <laughs> uh, I think Birch will just... Uh, can they hear me from the fucking first floor? Uh, who, Dr. Feelgood? Or management? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm assuming management can hear me at all times. I'm talking about Dr. Feelgood. Uh, you could probably uh, kind of call up to him, yeah. Probably not in a uh, normal speaking register, but not not like yelling. Uh, so do I sound distant? Do I sound distant? Yeah, you do. Hey, Doc! Gotta pay for that sandwich! <laughs> Doc, uh... <laughs> Doc sighs fishes out a ratty little paper wallet that's held together mostly by duct tape. Fishes out a uh, couple ones. It is Look. it is six dollars for a foot long sandwich. He looks Damn. up at the sign, sees that it's six dollars still, looks back at his wallet, pulls out five ones, folds up the empty wallet and pulls out a dollar and quarters. Oh man! Aww. He's he's now just crossing his arms, st money still in hand, staring at the cash register. Just they couldn't it, let me have a bit more fun with the newbie. It opens the cash and register. Opens himself. no, it it opens as if it's already been run rung up. He puts the money in, closes it, takes a bite out of his uh, sandwich. Your, your, he, Doc's phone lights up uh, with, with a text from management. Thank you, management. <laughs> <laughs> he shakes his head, and while he is upset, he is smiling. I think, like, after her minute of massage chair, she's going to head over to the counter. Uh, Big Brother's pretty loud today, huh? Doc shrugs. Eh, they're just worried about us. You know, storm, stuff outside. Squirrels must be real bad tonight. Something must have pissed them off. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. So, um, you guys hear a uh, soft thud on the top, on, on the roof of the, the convenience store. Uh, couldn't be anything more than like a large cat landing on the on the thing. Uh, I did raccoons again. Uh, they got on the roof this time. Yeah. Uh, so you hear that thud repeat itself about ten more times. Okay. Do you have somebody stuck on the roof? Um, Il gato. I love that you're like speaking Italian in character. I love that. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. Uh, so the um. Do we have security cameras? Not for uh, the like, roof. Available to us. Not for the Damn. roof. No. You do like have a, a secure, a little security camera, like docking station on, uh, like next to the main cash register on the bottom floor. Uh, so Birch would be in charge of that. Yeah. It it's like Five Nights at Freddy's style. 
That's in great. Theory, would I be able to see up onto the roof from my residence? Uh, normally, yeah, you would be. Um, there's also like a crawl space that kind of leads up into the roof, so that you can avoid going through the third floor because the th third floor is locked. It's like a small shaft with a ladder that leads onto the roof. All right, Doc. I, uh, I'll uh, see you later. I gotta get this ice cream in the freezer. It's not gonna. I don't think it'll actually chill, will it? Because it's power outage, but it's probably. Hey, feel free to use some of our freezers or the walk-in fridge that we got. I'm sure management wouldn't mind a couple more things that aren't for sale. And he, Doc makes direct eye contact with one of the cameras. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Bing boom. <laughs> uh, this I time, like this time it is over the intercom. It's not even a text. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Doc, uh, no, I, we uh, management has informed me that it is not uh, it is not a problem if Auntie Ruth wants to. Uh, save some of her ice cream in the in our coolers. The walk-in is open to you, uh, Auntie. Uh, the other problem that we uh, are experiencing is please do not leave the uh, bodega. It is not safe. Thank you. Uh, this has been uh, Assistant Manager Joyce. Hi, Birch. And then she cuts off. Hi! <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. So they yeah. just like sit in the security room menacingly staring at you all day. They have a th oh, I'm not up there. <laughs> you can call up. Yeah. Hell, you can come up if you want. No one else I mean, here. there's no one else downstairs, right? Not that you know of. Can I do a sweep of the first floor before I even consider going upstairs? Yeah, absolutely. You kind of walk through, and the only thing that you find. Uh, really is a footprint uh, probably not from um, Auntie Ruth um, small footprint uh, not quite child size but like uh, you know like a petite adult um, like the print of a sneaker uh, but it's only one what direction is it facing? it is facing the coolers uh, the coolers for where the Pepsi is and there is a single Pepsi missing. Can I... Is there anything in this other side other than a Pepsi missing in there? <laughs> Not that you can see. You'd have to go around and go into the cooler. Yeah. Uh, I will go into the cooler. Okay. Um, you enter this large walk-in cooler area. It's also like a, a place where you sto store cold drinks and things like before you, so you can restock them quickly. Um, it's a large, almost warehouse-looking area that's attached to the inside of the bodega. And as you enter it, you see a woman. She is lithe, with graying skin and uh, bright purple eyes. Her uh, hair is soft and white and looks like as if it were just... Uh, like, she doesn't look like she's been in the storm at all, uh, other than her soaking wet clothes. Um... Uh... <laughs> I think Birch, like, will visibly, like, tense up a little bit, and it's like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> do I remember her coming in? Nope. Or is, is it just... You don't. She obviously did, but, um, because of how wet her clothes maybe. are, but you don't know I mean, when. maybe... Maybe I just spaced out super hard when she came in. Uh, Doc and Isabella, you also don't remember this person coming in, um... You guys aren't there, but, uh, like, just as you know, just so you know, no one re re remembers anyone but Auntie Ruth coming into the store. Uh, yeah, I think I'll text, uh, Doc, uh, hey, do you remember anyone else coming in today outside of Ruth? Uh, Doc texts back, yeah, you and Belle. You and Bella. Smartass. Sick. Uh, okay, don't worry he about sends it. Back a smiley face. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna figure out a thing. You have fun training the newbie. Doc, does that does that give off any alarm bells for you? Many. Uh, okay. He uh he looks at Bella. 
Hey, you feel confident running the deli? Because we should probably head downstairs. Uh, that's great. Uh, Claire, what do you, what does Bella say? I did not realize they were calling uh, me Bell. I, I was just so saying that with you. I apologize. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, he'll probably flip-flop between calling your character Izzy or Bella, but he'll probably settle on Izzy later. Si, no son problema. And she smiles. Great. Uh, My Latin languages are not as good as they used to be. I'll uh, just assume you said it's not a problem. Yes, no problem. Awesome. Uh, Okay. So while they're doing and, that, uh, Birch. Doc will go into yeah. his storage closet, grab a broom, and start making his way downstairs. Uh, so hold on. Well, before we go back to Birch, Ruth, you see Bert, you see Doc give the newbie the counter, and then grab a broom, as if to like, is it? Are you brandishing the broom like it's a weapon? No, he's brandishing the broom like he's going to have to clean the floor downstairs. Okay, um, uh, so I have a question. Uh, Auntie Ruth, do you follow? I think, yeah, I think actually she was, uh, intrigued by the it's dangerous outside uh, threat from management. Uh huh. So, as a matter of fact, she's going down because she wants to go peek out the front door and see what the fuck's going on out there. Okay, um,. So as you as you peek out the front door, uh, you and you and uh, Doc go downstairs, and as you peek out the front door, there is a deep, unsettlingly thick fog that has surrounded the store. The rain is still pouring outside, but there is an unsettlingly thick fog, and if you like look deep enough, you can see shapes moving outside in the fog. So her van is out in the parking lot. If she does a quick like beep beep for her for her van to, to make it do the little flashing of the lights, does she actually see it? In there? She sees the so when you do the when you go to do the beep beep, it's as if you know it doesn't register. Oh, like you're too far away from your car. Damn fucking batteries. She's gonna go buy some batteries. Okay. Uh, you can definitely buy a, like, watch battery to replace the ones in your, your thing. Uh, and you see... I mean, mm -hmm. Birch is not at the counter to check you out, though. So. Yeah, that's the other thing, is that Birch isn't there. Um, you'd have to go ask, uh... Shoplifting it is. You have, no, you have one other clerk. <laughs> Bella can check you out. Um, so... No, I'll just wait until later. Uh, so, Birch, before Dr. Feelgood gets in, this woman looks at you and is very, like, softly sipping a Pepsi. And she goes, I, I will pay for this later. I promise. I just... Uh, okay. And she kind of sips it a little more. And she looks up at you, and her eyes start to glow. Uh, uh sick. And okay. in an un almost unnatural voice, I don't have a voice changer, but just imagine, like, my voice is slightly modulated. Uh, Tonight in the fog... He will rise. Tonight in the fog, he will kill you all. Do not open the door. Do not let him in. And then uh, she just kind of repeats that statement over and over again. Fuck my phones. My IRL phone status is going to text it up here. And while she's doing that, I'm texting it out in like a notes app. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, sick. I don't have a notes section in here, so I will... There is a notes section. It says notes and discussion. Bodega by night. Uh, notes and discussion. Uh-huh. I was just going to put it in the end or something. Ooh. Yeah, but that's right. like... Uh -huh. it's So it's it's public notes. So you guys can, like, share the notes. 
Uh, okay, Birch. I'm just gonna title it Birch's <laughs> Note App. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I just blinks several times uh, after writing it down. Okay. Uh, cool. Great. Uh, you probably shouldn't go outside right now, uh, until they clear us to be able to go. Pretty bad out there right now, apparently. I know. Uh, he is out there. He is on top of the station. He's on top of the haven. Uh, okay, so it's not just... Okay, sick. Uh, I... Okay, let me... Can... I do investigate a mystery. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, whenever you investigate a mystery, roll plus sharp. On a 10 plus, hold 2. On a 7 to 9, hold 1. Uh, there is no failure condition, so I'm not exactly sure what happens on a failure, but... We'll find out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh... hate it here! <laughs> Uh, so you begin to kind of try and figure this out. So you, what you understand from kind of listening to what she's talking uh, about and, uh-huh. So, uh, so there's holds for investigative mystery. Yep. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I know. Um, so you hold one because you failed. I hold one? Sick. Yeah. And I mark an experience point. Yeah. So, uh, okay. you kind of get from what she's saying, because you, you didn't really get it all. Like, you're not kind of really comprehending what she's saying, because it's almost so, like, it's it's like many voices speaking at once. Um, and it's kind uh -huh. of all garbled. Uh, and wh what you do get is that something is outside that wasn't outside before. It is a dangerous thing. And it is currently on top of the bodega. Oh, okay. Can I choose a hold off of the list? Yes, absolutely. Um, can I do? Uh, a lot of these I feel like I already know the answer to. Um, uh, what sort of creature is it? Um, so kind of listening to her words. You get that it is a demon of some kind. Uh, fantastic. I need more of those in my life. It's a uh, demon okay. or spirit of some kind. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so is she is she still doing the modulated thing or has she kind of snapped uh, out? She of is it? beginning to float as as Doc Doc comes in. She's beginning to float uh, and still saying that over and over again. Her eyes are glowing. Uh, she drops the Pepsi. It spills all over the floor. God, I just cleaned that. Okay. Uh, I suppose there's better things to be upset about. Uh, Doc, hey. Doc, you have you arrived to this weird shit going on. How do you respond? Doc just stares at the floating woman take looks at birch note does a quick check make sure birch birch isn't visibly harmed looks back at the floating woman well not what i had expected for the evening but guess this isn't outside the ordinary too much and he'll uh, kind of try and Pull the floating woman down. Okay. Um, so what happens essentially is as you try to grab her, she looks down at you and shrieks as if uh, she's going and, and she goes to lunge at you as if she's going to attack and then passes out in your arms. Okay, uh, so... This might as well happen. Uh, you should probably go get the newbie. 
Uh, there's a demon, a spirit on the roof. He might, uh, with intentions to kill us. Uh, don't go outside. Uh, don't open the door. Uh, standard procedure. Should I lock the door? At that moment, because Auntie Ruth, you are in the main area. You hear, you yeah, see like someone in slam in front, slam up to the door and start knocking frantically. Uh, as if they are trying to come in and are terrified, but do not know if the door is I mean, unlocked. It's not locked, I don't think. I haven't locked it. And I'm standing right in front of it. I'll just like look at them. Uh, so as you look at this person, uh, you, how, how, uh, where, how much do you, does Auntie Ruth know about, like, celebrities. Probably very little. Okay, so you would, she probably would not recognize Axl Rose, lead singer of, uh, of Guns N' Roses, then. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So, it is, he, he, like, uh, attempts to come in, he doesn't seem like he can, he looks like he's running from something. Uh, does Auntie Ruth open the door for this very skinny man it's, with long, long red hair? Uh, okay, so I'll say at that point, uh, Birch, you guys get outside or out out to the main area, and you see uh, this man kind of banging on the door as if he can't come in. Uh, I will run up, like literally running as fast as humanly possible. Uh. Do not open that door. I mean, it, it, clearly he's struggling to fucking open a full door. No, don't open it. Just don't. Don't open I mean, it. I was gonna wait to see if he could if he could do it himself. As uh, as you warn her not to open the door, uh, the Axel Rose like and look the Axel Rose looks at you and narrows his eyes. And then his his he opens his mouth, and the jaw dislodges, and a rows of razor sharp teeth can be seen. And he will scream at you and scutter skittle scutter scuttle away into the darkness. Uh, I locked the door. I locked the door. I locked the door so fast. Okay. Uh. Uh, so, we're not letting anyone in, uh, for right now, uh, we're gonna get everyone else together, we gotta, head... no, <laughs> uh, so just hang out down here for a hot second, I'm gonna go get the new person, uh, make sure no one gets in, the door's locked, they shouldn't, but I trust you. Uh, uh you hear another, sure you hear... Door. You hear another thum, 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 from the roof. Fucking Christ. I mean, okay. I'll join you upstairs, because I don't want to sit down here alone. Yeah, you're more than welcome to join me. Uh, yeah, I'm sprinting towards the stairs. Yeah, you get upstairs very easily. It's an escalator, so you don't really have to run. Um, but yeah, you get you can get upstairs very easily. Running uh, up an escalator is, uh, un- is like terrible. Just so you're aware. I know. Uh, hey, Isabella. Uh, no one else is in here. Uh, you can just leave that. Uh, follow me downstairs. It's kind of important. Yeah, she's uh, she, she's gonna leave everything and then uh, just follow. I think Ruth is gonna hang out and like check out that crawl space that supposedly leads to to the up. You're gonna okay. So you open the door. To this little like it looks it's about a broom closet size room uh or like a walk-in closet not really a broom closet but like a walk-in closet size broom with a ladder that leads up to a locked latch at the top uh you would okay. assume someone else has the key but it is locked at all times okay i think um she's gonna close the door back to this little closety area and is going to put her string and key and coin on the doorknob so that if we if it opens we'll hear it. Okay, awesome. So you're setting up an, like an alarm. Good to know. Um, okay, so you all can like gather together up by the deli. Um, 
Uh, by the, the on the first floor where. Oh, okay. Where, so you're all going yeah, downstairs. Where what the fuck it is? Yeah, that's why I said leave leave everything down here right now. It's fine. We'll come back to this later. Management can be a bitch about it later. <laughs> uh. Sorry. No, you're all right. Um, so you all gather on the first floor. Uh, Auntie Ruth, I'm assuming you you joined them back on the first floor. Um, <laughs> and uh, what kind of what is the conversation looking like for you guys? Uh, currently, uh, I think. Uh, so, I think I'm good. Well, let me look at exactly what my fucking gun is before I say my words out loud. Um, I'm gonna grab my nine millimeter. Uh, from I assume it's in the break room. Ah, uh, you could uh, have carried it on you. North Carolina is an open carry state. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, make sure I have my gun. Uh, make sure I have my knife. Just in case I have to actually use them. God forbid I actually have to. Um. So you're making sure you're Yeah. Uh, so before, sure before anything, uh, you know, like a conversation happens, Isabella. See. Si. Your standard cell phone rings. And the uh, the ringtone is, <laughs> well, what, what is this noise? What is that this is ringtone? I can't I can't whistle right now, but it's like the old timey western like. Yeah. Wah, the good, the bad, wah, the shit. Yeah. Oh, good, the bad, oh, the ugly oh. noise. I would um, play it on harmonica, but I have it on very good authority. That is painful for others. Yeah, the harmonica yeah. with your with your um, with your mic oh. is pretty bad. Um, yeah. This all, is all the had... huh? Oh, I I, I know the, who this is. It's the crotchety old bastard. It's Clint yep. Eastwood, uh, diet flavored. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you answer the phone? Yes, of course. This man pays my bills. Uh, okay, so you answer, and uh, and uh, your mentor Jacob Masterson is on the other line, uh, and he, you know, he doesn't say hello, he doesn't say anything, and he goes, "Status report." <laughs> this is immediate uh, first thing. Uh, I uh, I see that there is a strange man who unhinged his jaw at the front door and banged on the door, repeatedly, despite it being unlocked. Yeah, yeah. And do I know about the floating lady downstairs? Uh, you probably wouldn't uh, know about the floating lady unless the, no, because the, they haven't told you about it yet. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Did was it able to try and get into the store? No. Uh. Keep me updated. Okay. I'll call you, I'll call you back in two hours. This fog's thicker than a uh, thicker than a witch uh, uh, thicker than a witchy bitch on TikTok. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, all right, I'll see you. Then he hangs up. <laughs> what? Yep. I've gathered you all here. Uh, so... Yeah. Go ahead. It's, no, sorry. Just the, uh, the, the thicker than a witchy bitch on TikTok caught me so off guard. <laughs> you the player or your character because both, both. <laughs> oh god uh Birch is just gonna like gather I think uh by default just always happens just, just always defaults to the fucking cashier's desk cause that's where like uh, he is like 99% of the time anyway um uh so uh so there was a lady in the walk-in freezer. Uh, I, Bert, uh, so where did you put her? Question mark. Doc, did you just leave uh, her in the freezer? No, Doc is actively carrying her. Yeah, it's, so it's this okay. lithe woman with like gray skin. Uh, her hair is like a deep white. Eyelashes are same color. Uh, her eyes, when they were open, were purple. Um, and she's got, like, long, very well-manicured fingernails, but her clothes are soaking wet. 
Uh, so, uh, no one remembers her coming in, which is kind of weird. Uh, and just for just another thing, her hair is pristine. It's dry. Any t- anywhere that's not her clothes is dry. Huh. Weird. Uh, so be advised, uh, no one's being let in. Uh, no one's going out. Uh, the man outside, uh, that I told you about, uh, Isabella, uh, uh, is not, uh, intent to kill us, question mark. Uh, and I don't know if the us just extends to employees or literally anyone else. Um, At that very moment, you get an alert on one of the exterior security cameras. And because it has, it's CCTV and it has, um, and it has, uh, like audio, Birch, you hear almost as a whisper. Come on, Birch. You know you want to let me in. It's going to be okay. Hate that. Uh, out loud, uh, so seemingly nothing. Uh, no, thank you. I'm good. Well, no, it's, it's, it's like the CCTV, so everybody can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Birch audibly responding to this thing. Uh, and then as you say that, it screeches and the camera, like, the camera feed cuts. You see, like, ah, the maw, the jaws, uh, as if it took a bite out of the camera. Uh, I text Joyce, uh, hey, one of our cameras is busted. Joyce, I know, Sorry. uh, I know we're working on it. Don't let it I into the store. Know. I locked the door. <laughs> There's not much The door is made do. of glass. What do you want me to do? <laughs> if it gets in the store, shoot it. Okay. God. Is this over uh is this over loudspeaker? No, this is a text. This is a text. It, it's it's just Birch frantically texting on the phone and looking mildly exasperated. Uh okay, so uh if that thing gets through the door, uh does any is anybody else armed with weapons? Or is it just me? Always. Uh, I know you're armed, Ruth. You're armed all the time. <laughs> Doc shrugs. Doc, He's not saying yes or no. Doc could yet. hit somebody with a fucking. Could Doc could definitely hit someone with the the unconscious woman. Uh, <laughs> he could. Uh, he could. Uh, quote hey, an ancient barbarian yeah. way. Hit a motherfucker uh, with another motherfucker. Hey, Isabel. Uh, do you have a weapon? Do you have a weapon? Uh. Uh, see, and I'm going okay. to pull out a um. Uh, what did you say it was? Billy? It's a snub nose thirty a thirty eight special revolver, and a silver knife. She she uh, spins a little revolver and it's like it's like cowboy movie. Cool, great. Uh, At so that exact if- moment, you hear gunshots <laughs> in the distance. Uh, fantastic. Uh. If I tell you to shoot at something, I need you to shoot at something. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, so you hear something like jiggling the handle of the door and just loud, gruff, fuck. Oh, uh, what's outside? You see a, a tall man in a black, brown leather duster, uh, like jean shirt underneath, long je- uh, like blue jeans, cowboy boots, cowboy hat, big fuck-off revolver on his hip, uh, and a cross around his neck, and he's got a big scruffy beard, a visible, like, scar on his cheek, uh, one of his eyes is blinded out, the other one's, like, good, but, like, one eye is, like, that misty gray color that people get when their corneas get scratched, and he just kind of looks into the door, points at Isabella, and just gives a thumbs up, or, like, a thumbs down, like he's asking if everything's okay, uh, she, she, she gives me a very enthusiastic thumbs up. He nods, thumbs up, points as if he's gonna go fucking hunt the thing again. You see him cock the revolver. <laughs> Bye, uh, Dad! Damn. <laughs> Your dad's hot. Th- thanks? <laughs> 
Doc uh, looks at the interaction. He's taken a couple steps away from Isabella. <laughs> uh, remind me if this is flat. Which flat? This is uh, tu padre loco. That's Spanish. Damn, it's Spanish. How do I say yeah. that? How do I say that in Italian? What are you trying to say? Your dad's I'm crazy. Trying to call the guy you just called bad crazy. Uh, me trying to remember out of character. You've only been out of Italy for uh, like what? Several years? Tu, uh, tu padre, tu padre e puzzle. Puzzle. Tu padre e puzzle. Thank you, thank you, grazie. Uh, but yeah. Anybody want some ice cream? But, I mean, nothing's actively trying to kill us right now. So I'm, you hear I'm... a jingle from upstairs. Is it the Hello? The it is, in fact, the coin. I go up the stairs. I'm going to rush up the stairs. Okay. Dog you you get up the stairs, and what you see as you get up there is Grammy Award-winning uh, actor, a uh, Grammy Award-winning uh, musical, musical uh, personality and actor, Childish Gambino. I assume I'm too far it's away to use a close range weapon to use a, a melee weapon, I mean. Say again? Uh, would I be in range to use a close weapon, which is this is a firearm, but mind you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Void, if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, refunding that redeem, I will give the lore about me later when it's not a TTRPG stream. Uh, I can do that for you, boss. Sorry. Awesome, thank you. I would... So essentially, as soon as Ruth sees someone like going through that door, essentially, uh, she's going to draw a hand cannon from the inside of her gi and. Fly. Oh my god! I assume tough to kick some ass. Yeah, yeah, tough to kick some ass. Yeah. I'll just go ahead and. That's All right. Mixed. You shoot Donald Glover in in this in this instance. Uh, and, and instead of a human, uh, noise, uh, he screeches like that of a demon. Uh, this is, uh, this is a doppelganger, uh, and he, I'm... his, his jaw begins to unhinge and you see large, uh, teeth as he begins to come at you. Uh, can I start going upstairs? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you hear a loud, loud gunshot. It's a loud ass weapon, uh, and it does three harm, by the way. If you're curious. Okay, good to know. Good to know. God uh, bless it. This... <laughs> I forgot to. I forgot to to make Donald Glover a uh, a fucking um, character sheet. My bad. It's not good. You, it's gonna be a real place action. Also, you, someone is breaking and you have to kill them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, as Someone's the DM breaking in, it. Kill the DM in, in this particular so, type of So, just to be clear, we're shooting at the hamburger helper glove? No, no, no. Donald Glover is, like, Childish Gambino. That's the person. The, the like, the artist. Uh, but right now it's not it's not no longer Donald Glover. It dropped his disguise. It's a doppelganger. He's like uh, can he's. You hear me? Uh, I can. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. That's okay. Um, but yeah, it's a right now. It looks like it's been changing. It was Axel Rose earlier, and it wouldn't come. You wouldn't. Uh, it you know, you wouldn't let it in when it was in the cameras. You didn't really look at it at the cameras. But when it was talking to Birch earlier, it looked like Gary Busey, and now it looks like Donald Gr Donald Glover. Like uh, award-winning uh, musician and uh, award-winning musician and uh, and Grammy and Grammy award winner or Grammy award-winning mu musician and Emmy award-winning uh, television personality, uh, yeah. Interesting so choice. Trying... How many harm did that do? Sorry, it did three harm. And three. what I was trying to say uh, was that. So in this particular type of game, the GM generally doesn't have to roll anything. Okay. 
just just so that like you, it's built around you don't have to do much. Yeah, it's just I when Donald Glover attacks you. I'm gonna. That's you the... just set an amount of harm and determine whether or not it, it, it hits us. I think that has to do with the tough roll. Yep, that's that's. I was just setting up something to do tough and whatnot. Okay. Uh, I don't think you have to roll the tough roll. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, it is going to move toward you and attempt to slash you with claws. Uh, I do. Roll, please. Okay. Submit. Uh, that is an advanced success. Uh, and claws do one harm. And it takes uh, some forward item. Uh, yes. Uh, as it happens, I do too. If I have suffered harm in a fight, I push one ongoing until the fight is over. Okay, awesome. Um, so now that this combat has started, uh, Birch, what you doing, buddy? Uh, well, I was told very specifically uh, to do violence if I, if the fucking goddamn thing got it, so. Okay. Uh, me open it the right thing first. Um, I'm gonna look at this thing. Look at this thing in the fucking face. Freaky ass bitch. I don't say that in character. Um, ow. Goddamn ankle. Um, okay. Uh, okay, well, that's not gonna help me that much right now. Oh, just trying to skip mess. Uh, world plus weird instead of plus tough. Attack is too far. Be a single armor. Um, I have something called the big whammy. Uh huh. Uh, you can use your powers to kick some ass. Roll plus weird instead of plus tough. Uh, the attack does t- has two harm. Close, oblivious, ignore armor. On a miss, you get magical backlash. Um, so despite, I do kind of want to try this and fuck with powers, because the weird is fun. Um, <laughs> the, sh- the whatever is spooky. Um, I think, so, narratively, how do you think the big whammy would like look for like powers wise uh so about the powers so, so big whammy for you i think is pulling upon your uh your um patron i think okay. it's your like fist swirls with like purple energy uh okay yeah so <laughs> just birch coming in with the fucking fist as like this thing is attacking uh uh, anti Ruth. Yep. Uh, uh, thoughts, prayers, everybody. Uh, weird default. Uh, nothing forward. Damn, alright. <laughs> yeah, you just punch in the fucking face for, uh, two damage. For two harm. Okay. Uh, uh so two more harm on the, on the creature. Uh, and Doc feel good. Actually, no, Doc. Oh. I'm gonna say because you're carrying a person, Isabella can go yeah. before you. <clears throat> All right. Um. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that snub nose to use. Uh, seeing this unholy abomination, uh, shift into what I can only imagine is something out of my worst nightmares. I'm just gonna shoot it with my revolver. Okay, yeah. Uh, are you using the stand your standard bullets, which you have a very large supply of, or are you using uh, the other ones that were given to you by the guy you called Dad? I'm gonna use one of the other ones because. Uh, so you said this was a literal demon? Yeah, he's a shapeshifter demon. I'm gonna yeah no I'm gonna use one of the other bullets. Okay, so yeah, you pull out. Uh, you know, you have your your chamber full with your your uh, holy bullets and uh, and uh, you get up here and you see this demon uh, and what do you do like what do you do you have anything to say or anything like that um 
I am going to be uh, nice to everyone here and just say she screamed something incomprehensible in Latin and shoots it. <laughs> or not Latin, Italian and shoots it. I mean, it could absolutely uh, be rough... Latin, knowing the per knowing what we know about your backstory. It, it, she's roughly saying, "Oh, sweet Mary's tits! What the fuck is that?" And then shoots. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Um, go ahead and roll, and you're gonna add an extra harm uh, when when you if if you hit. Uh, what do I roll exactly? Uh, so you, I believe your one second. Um, so your um, hmm, it's tough. I do believe to for long for long range weapons. Yeah, it's it's if you if you're rolling kicks a mat. So yeah, tough. Yeah. Okay. Um. Clicking on the dice and it just says input value. Yeah, hit, hit, go ahead. Just click submit. Oh. Uh, uh it's, va it's value forward, uh, which the DM will tell you if you need it. Yep, yep. So, you mix success. So you do one harm. Plus one, so that's so two, two harm. So it is dead. Good. Um, you guys see. Uh, Isabella come up, whip out a revolver, and fire, hitting this thing dead in the maw as it falls dead, and the cowboy from earlier lands, arm injured, clearly having a bite taken out of his shoulder, and he goes, <sighs> damn piece of shit, and then shoots it again, even though it's already dead. This He's... is the uh, cowboy looking guy? Yeah, this is the cowboy from earlier. Damn, you see him uh, Stare. He he so looks over and goes, uh, "No, ma'am, I have a wife." Shame. Call me after changes. <laughs> Isabella, what the fuck happened? Uh, she she roughly transcribes that um. Uh, this was uh went from uh Axel. To um, Gary Busey. Uh, Gary Busey. <laughs> yep. To Donald Glover, and then into the demon. Now a yeah. pile of ash. Yep. Yep. Name was Haloth. It was a shapeshifter demon. I'm gonna need that one too. She needs to get back into the ocean. The ocean. Ah, uh, just the. Uh, uh, so I hate, I hate to be paid in the ass. She does have to pay for a Pepsi before she can leave. Uh, you know, I'm going to say your management can just kind of take one on the chin. They can bill my people. It'll be fine. But Lots I got to get that selfie, up. that selkie right there back into the ocean. Mm-hmm. Explains why she wasn't happy with me. So, you Wait, hand I feel her like over? Explains... Yeah, he'll Entirely kind of left. hold her out to him. Uh, good. How do we know you're not a demon? Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of things, but one of them, one of them is that I'm wearing a holy, an holy artifact, and he'll kind of show the little wooden cross he's got on. It's made wow. from the true cross. Fair enough. Mm, neat. He'll uh he'll go somebody open unlock the front door. And he'll uh head downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, Isabella will unlock the front door. Uh as you do unlock the front door, it seems that the storm and the fog are gone. Is my van still there? Where? Your van is over is upside down, but it's still there. You bastards. I'm just gonna go out and try to help. Uh, he will put the selkie in like a tub of water in the back of an old pickup and he'll come over and he goes, let me, ma'am. And he seems to like have unnatural strength as he flips the fucking van. I think she just stares at a second like longingly. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, miss. Uh, have a wonderful day. And he'll tip his hat and get in his old beat up ass pickup truck and put that bitch in the gear and just start bagging out. 
I better not get in trouble for this. Uh, you right. all, all of the employees get a text message. Bing boom. Uh, thank you all for yeah. thank you all for dealing with the intruder. If Jacob Masterson might happen to come back, tell a, tell him tell that old scruffy asshole he owes management three hundred and eighty dollars. God damn! To replace the lock that we had on the well, the we'll, we'll and to replace the locks we had on those cameras. Did they not tack on like a dollar fifty for the Pepsi? We can eat the Pepsi on the chin. He was right. Manager. <laughs> uh, Peter Pie, I want it. I want it replied. I want it. I want it to be known, and I tried. Did you, my best. Uh, Birch, Birch, you will be getting a bonus on your next paycheck, management. Yeah. Uh, as as you guys all as as they say that uh, a small slot by the front register uh, prints three paychecks. Hey management, I got hurt on the premises. You should give me a voucher for that massage chair. How badly was the how bad is the injury? On a scale of one to seven, a one. We will give you one voucher for one minute. Ooh, ah, ooh, actually, I might be a little bit more hurt. <laughs> no, actually, it's my back hurts. My neck hurts, actually. Ow. Check out Whiplash. <laughs> and that Doc is... walks over to the register to dish out paychecks. Yeah, uh, so you guys all got your your standard pay of nine ninety seven plus 32 45 an hour uh, damage pay where after having worked an eight hour shift is a lot of money. I don't have the exact calculation, but you make a good bit. Um, Auntie Ruth, you do get a two hour or you get a two minute voucher, not two hours, but two minute wow. voucher for the massage chair. Uh, Fuckers. Management did feel sorry for you. So they gave you two minutes of unpaid. <laughs> Of, of unpaid massage chair. I sold it. Uh, and that is where we will pan out for this session. Uh, as we all come down from the wonderful mystery that was the demon on the roof. Um, how did you guys like your introductory session to Monster, this this world of Monster of the Week? I thought it was sick as fuck. Very fun. I'm uh, just I, I, glad I, I... Mm-hmm. After you. Ahem, ahem. Uh, so, at end of session, uh, the keeper will ask ask some questions, and if we answer yes to one or two of them, we get experience. Okay. Uh, uh, I can shoot those over to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Sorry to interrupt. I'm like, You're I know, okay. I know enough about. This, so. You are okay. I totally forgot about that, so that's I appreciate that. It's okay. Uh, so first one, did we conclude the current mystery? Uh, yes. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. I'd say so. Did uh, did we save someone from certain death? Uh, us <laughs> ourselves. Okay. Did we learn something new and important about the world? It's scary. Uh, there's, that that there's a cowboy there's... and he's hot. There's doppelgangers out there. Did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Yeah, I I mean, I'd like to think... <laughs> I don't know how important you'd call someone having a very hot cowboy dad uh, <laughs> important, but... I mean, we learned that one of our co-workers has a gun consecrated rounds and a silver knife uh and and is I, I, and only and kind of only speaks italian yeah vaguely yeah. vaguely only italian um where's my light there it is so um, you guys mark 
two experience points because you've answered yes for all four questions. Yes, let's go. Three experience, bitch. Let's go. That was awesome. Thank you for running it, dear. Thank you guys for playing. Congratulations. Uh, I uh, on your on your surviving my doppelganger, and thank you all for playing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead uh, and say goodbye. Okay, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just like most doppelgangers. I try to mess with your psyche. This one's just like I want to be various internet, per He's, various like yeah, celebrities. various celebrities. He's also very hungry. He was a very hungry boy. Uh, Normally, he can uh, get away uh, with with making people starstruck. That a that a celebrity is trying to like come into their store. I mean. Might have worked if I had not gone. Uh, no, you're not getting inside. Yep, he Thanks. had. So he, so with the door, he can't pass a threshold without being invited in. Yeah. But a crawl space does not count. A crawl space with a door and a lot. Yeah, but as you'll recall, uh, that he didn't open that. Uh fucking Masterson did. He got knocked through it. Uh, he was damn near unconscious when you guys fucking murdered that thing. Uh, and he still had enough energy to flip my vine, my van. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we are, we. this is where we will end session, and we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. Uh, Claire, you get to experience... One of my favorite uh, pastimes and this uh, for this. Uh, for YouTube, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and remember, fuck you, Dave. Fuck you, Dave. Fuck you, Dave.